There we go. Nuke is going to be the game here. And I'm, I'm going to be honest here. Uh, Nuke is really going to favor G2. If it was Overpass or Inferno Jack, I really felt like Greyhound might have, might have kind of stood a chance. I really like the T-shirts too. But here we are. We are going to be going live real quick in Greyhound on the T-side. Yeah, getting straight into it. They do have beautiful jerseys, don't they? I love it. They are wonderful. I'd like to do, see them, you know, do an event-by-event event basis of jerseys. But let's see if we are going to see a bit of that Shoxy speciality that you spoke about in a few mere seconds. It does appear they are trying to set up for a bit of a ramp ruse early on. Yeah, and Shox, the USP, he doesn't have any armor. He's got the kit and a nade. And the nade could do a lot of damage. In the meantime, you can see Greyhound tossing in I do believe there's a smoke or a decoy, I'm not too sure. They broke about events and Shoxy just rattles off one shot. The nade could do a lot of damage. Indeed, it does. Look at the amount of damage being inflicted. Lucky spots out a player, doesn't really commit to the fight. And Shoxy finds one, gets traded quickly, as it will be a 4v4. However, Amanek replies back. This is nice. They've left themselves into a free versus two. It's not a great position for Greyhound, but they can still try and make something out of this. It just depends on the firefights. At this point, though, it's traded just back down to Dexter. He's in a one versus two, sprinting his way through the vents, causing a little bit of an uproar. 45 seconds still left on the clock. Glock in hand. Can he do some damage? Can he in close proximity? Gets the tag off. It's not looking good, Blur. It's not looking good at all. He has no idea where Lucky is. Lucky, well, he doesn't need to do anything if Kenny's going to hit shots like that. 3K for Kenny, yes. And that was basically the trades going the way of G2. Very quick rotations coming out from them. You saw the player towards Decon as well. The second shots dropped. There was, he was there for the, for the trade. And Greyhound Gaming not even getting the bomb down. And for G2, that's a great start. Yeah, it was a nice little intro round to, you know, ease them into it, allow things to start to soak their way up. This is actually their first appearance at the ESL Pro League Finals since June of 2017 as well, where they took home the championship, beating out North. So for G2 as a whole, for the, uh, the overall organization, chance to once again put a stamp in the APL scene. Indeed. And if you look at G2 as an org across various esports titles, right, they are a team who are not just used to second or third places. They're, they are a championship team. Uh, speaking of champions, Kenny S looked a little scary there, but he does pick up another 3k. And Dexter Ooh. with the shank in the butt <laughs> and lucky. Not so lucky this time around. And Dexter might be able to get the bomb down if that smoke can work out for him. And Jack spraying through the smoke. I don't, I don't know how he... That did not connect, but Amanek is there to save the day. So Dexter is going to be pretty okay with that. A knife in, a little bit of extra money for him to go for the buy. And the buy is indeed going to be coming in for Greyhound. I thought we were seeing the trade of the knife kills there. I was I was already getting shocked. I my hand on my chest. It's too early for this, Blair. It's, you know, it's the I, morning. I, I We've got it. to ease into this. It's crazy. I love it. The second round <laughs> of the day and the knife already. You got to love it. And Greyhound. Let's see what we have here. Sicko with the AWP, one of the, the, the latest addition to the team. Well, that being said, he's been around for at least a few months now, so he should be feeling pretty comfortable here. Shoxy, love his positioning here. Aggressive towards Secret. Let's see what he's got. He's got the AUG. Two AUGs in play, two UMPs, and then MP9 on Jax. It's kind of like the, the bonus round, some people might say, but at the same time, I mean, considering it's new, these SMGs can do a lot of damage. Oh, that is very true. And the switch up towards outside as well has actually caught a fair bit of paranoia with the way Sicko has to clear these angles. You can see taking an awful lot of time, a minute and 20 on the clock, advances way forward, a little bit of a fault with the jump, but it's still going to be okay, so they can try and get that control. However, if they do not suspect Shox's position playing over towards the secret stairs, that's when a bit of trouble will arise. I'm, I'm not really a big fan of the way Greyhound are taking towards outer. Like, it might work out this time around, but they're relying on winning these duels and Dexter barely alive, and that's information gleaned. So, Shocks, he's just lying in wait, holding the line. Let's see what they do. He's, oh. Oh, that's nice. That is cheeky indeed, right on top of the smoke. The nade just scratches him a little bit. Dexter, if he shows even a little toe there, he's done for. Yeah, a little bit of ankle. Oh, Shoxy spots him out. Stealthy man that he is, quickly scurries his way off as well. So at this point, they've fallen back into the four on four. It's been a very slow outside control round coming through from Greyhound. It's not worked out too fantastically for them as they are left in now a little bit of a stalemate, and this is where it could get very rough. Yeah, I mean, less than 30 seconds, and they barely have any control of Secret. Even the players floating around towards the lobby, I do believe it's uh, Malta, hasn't really done much here. And, yeah, Malta, he's trying to sell something here, and he gets caught up. I love how Judy just pushed in towards lobby, and now they're stuck. They need to make a play 10 seconds on the clock. Shoxy spots him out, and it's going to be Sicko. Nice kill there. Makes it a 3v3. They have seven seconds to get the bomb done, and they will indeed, but Jax. With an MP9, what could he possibly do? Oh, can he cause some mischief? 
Be a little bit of a nuisance going into this one. Urkast, he's deciding to play it very up close and personal, and there is potential for a big spray down to come through as well. Playing around the smoke, listening out right now. Still a bit paranoid about the fact someone could try and do some damage from Decon. If he walks through the smoke, it all just depends on the timing, really, as he holds his own. Waiting for the instigation, spots out Jax. The easy murder on the first, the flick to the second. Didn't quite realize that Lucky was there, but at this point, he saved the round for them. Yeah, there's no time remaining here. Lucky just gonna head for the hills. That was brilliantly played by Urkas, and I'm still left scratching my head. How in God's name did Greyhound win that round? They had 26 seconds, Jax, when they managed to make their way towards Secret. They had no map control, they had no information whatsoever. Just ran in. One, Sicko getting the kill on the Shoxi, I think that pretty much was so instrumental in them winning that round. Yeah, it, it's quite wild though. I mean, what, we have about 25 seconds left when they eventually got secret control? At that point, literally, if Shox would have been able to just delay, they, they would have been out of that entire round. Six seconds on the plant, but Greyhound, they, they get it going for themselves. Obviously, this T-side is where they need to make an impact as well. They can't afford to be looking like a pancake at the end of this first half. Absolutely. And yeah, I think you hit the nail right in the head there. If Shox was playing towards Decon, for example, that run was done and dusted. There was no way G2 would have lost at one. But that being said, they do have the two players that stayed alive for Greyhound and had had the off Ooh. nice shot by Sicko. Unfortunately, not able to land the killing blow. And Kenny S will escape at 17 HP. The thing is, he's got the Desert Eagle. And we all know what he can do with that. That's very true. It's a bit of a ridiculous angle to be holding, though. <laughs> that is a filthy cut angle if you can hit something. It is Kenny, yes. That is true. Well, Lucky, he's the only player with any, well, utility weaponry to speak of. The AK-47 picked up earlier. The native flashes smoke. He's got a kit as well. He could make this work if any of his teammates, if those deagles can sing and do a little bit of damage, he could just jump in and... Oh no, the timing on that shocks. He caught out with his pants down. Jax is gonna do a smart thing, fall on back down. He hasn't taken any damage yet. He's got the deagle. He could do something here. Yeah, he's gonna have to lock horns though. They'll have an entire herd of elephants stampeding their way back. Looks like they're actually heading towards Lobby as well. They've set their gaze over on the A site and they're gonna try and see what damage they can do. The timing doesn't work out well for Urkax. He needs to invest into a watch. Sicko gets the trade back on Lucky, luckily enough. And Jax goes down the Malta. Things are looking awful for the G2 squad as they're all getting picked off one by one. And Kenny finds himself in a situation at least to save an AK. Yeah, I should just hold on to this. They're gonna go for the buy anyway. And he should, if my math is correct, my math has been terrible of late after the economy changes, but he should be able to afford an AWP. And he could potentially drop that AK off over to a Shocks, perhaps, where he can make do with it. But for Greyhound, tying things up 2 2, surviving the, uh, well, pretty much an eco run from G2. So things looking pretty interesting here. And bear in mind, it's no longer like a super CD sided map anymore. Teams have been playing this map way more often. They know how it works here. And hold on to that thought. Kenny is getting hunted down. Ooh. Now they know where he is, but yeah, I don't think they'll be able to go for the hunt. And there's no need. Let him save the AK. You don't want to lose an AWP. Yeah, it's a good position to be in. Now, for G2 as well, over in the group stage, they were actually able to play out two nuke games over the course of the, uh, the season. And they won both of them, taking a 16-11 victory over Fnatic and a 16-14 win versus Na'Vi as well. So it bodes well going into this, at least. Yeah, indeed. I mean, G2 are a team who can play nuke, even the ones where they have lost. It's not like they got completely stomped. They have the protocols right. They know, what, uh, they know the roles each player is supposed to do. And even when things don't work out, I like how they're able to adapt. And worst case scenario, they have the firepower to make things work, but Sicko comes out on top as Kenny S loses a duel. Now, this is a bit better as well. They're actually playing a little bit more aggressive towards outside because it was very slow, almost as if they were just giving them way too much respect, right? And that's why Shox was in such a good power play position to do damage. And once again, that name rings a bell. There he is, sat towards main, trying to see what he can do. Jax, utilizing the Kenny S angle, shattering glass and shattering skulls as he rips his way through Sicko. And Shox, I love this play from him. The smoke playing at the edge, they didn't expect that. And Dex is barely alive. And while Shox plays distraction, Ooh. I'm not too sure why Shox had to re-peek out again. They're probably trying to catch someone off guard, but that's going to equalize things. However, that being said, Lucky will spot out Urkast, and it's down to Malta to get the frag on the Lucky, which he will. It's a 2v2 now, he's got a smoke for Mini, and he should get the bomb down here, but this is a very doable retake for G2. Oh, the Molotov actually goes through as well. Malta going to decide to play around the smoke, pushes in. That is ballsy. That is so ballsy. This could be so risky, depending on how he actually plays this. Both of them working their way back through Nest. The CT's trying to go in together here. Malta has that deep main control. They've got four flashes between the two terrorists that remain into this round. They clear it together. G2 going back in to try and mount this retake. 
They're making a bit of a hubbub. They're causing some ruckus. They don't have much utility, just one smoke, but Amanek's not gonna use it. They jump on the bomb. Malta punishes the first, and Jack's caught between the crossfire. There's not much he can do. Greyhound with three. While Malta got the 3K there at the final two kills, Props to Dick Stacy. He was the guy who played distraction. He threw a couple of flashbangs, made a lot of noise to a yeah. squeaky. And you could see both G2 are like, uh, probably they're playing from HUD or they're playing from uh, from lobby. And Malta, perfect timing. Very well played 2v2 there by Greyhound. That was nice. It was cheeky stuff as well. The confidence actually starting to shine through a little bit more now. That's the factor that I think we need from Greyhound as well. If they're going to have a bit of an upset run and be able to cause really a stir throughout this tournament, they have to use that hype. They've got to use the level of energy that they've found in the past where they just sort of play a little bit balls to the walls crazy and they're not too scared. That is what you need to do. Like, if you are the underdog here, and let's be honest, everyone's going to expect Greyhound and the likes of a Daytona or, mm. or Luminosity or Talu to be the underdogs. You want to throw that curveball. You want to be a little disruptive. And now, G2, second eco for them. They did eco in the third round. And now, another one coming in. And Greyhound, they could easily make this 4-2. And that's a huge start for the Aussies. Pistols in play for G2. Choosing to favor those close angles this time around. Obviously, just rocking a little bit of the buddy system as Kenny S rolls around. It's the three-man set up towards the A site. Very slow round from Greyhound, holding to see if there would be any cheeky pushes coming through from G2. If they play their cards just right, one might be developing. Yeah, and you can see Shoxy already pushed up towards the radio, and they're looking to strike together simultaneously. Unfortunately, oh no, actually, Shoxy just has a flashbang, but that being said, I take his name but he falls on back because of some of the utility being deployed by Greyhound towards Outer. And I like what Greyhound are doing. They're taking it slow and methodical, using the utility to get more map control. They are aware that G2 are in a very sparse buy or an eco, and they're looking to avoid any trap being laid by the French team. It's going well for them. First point of contact could slowly be coming up, though, as they're cast. He might be in an elevated angle, but is he going to be on the top? of the food chain when it comes to this face. Walking his way over towards the A site. Here comes the convergence. Shox goes down first. Urkas with one. He's done his job. But Jax, how much of an annoyance can he be? How much cash can he get out of the hands of the T's? Murders the first with a flick onto Dexter. If he could have taken down Dick Stacy, that would have been a nice way to actually damage the economy. Instead, Greyhound, they clean their way through. They do get another round as it goes four to two. Yeah, that was a little too expensive uh, for me if I was Greyhound. You can look at that. Three players being lost. Pretty much almost a full eco. We did see a couple of CZs there. And because of that, if you look at the cash, Malta and Sicko are less than $1,000. Urkast less than 2K, so is Dexter. So if they lose this round, they are in, I wouldn't say danger of having to go for a full eco, for, for, for a full eco, but the money's not that great yet. However, that being said, it is the buy coming out. Sicko once again going aggressive, this time around towards hot. Not quite able to land anything, trying to go for the wall bangs as well. And for G2 this time around, though, Jack, they have all the utility, sorry, at least all the weaponry to work with. Utility a little sparse, but that's because they have sacrificed utility for all those AUGs, the AUGs. Yeah, the utility they did have, using quite early, but it was predicted, it was calculated. The Molotov towards Hut, completely denying that play from Sicko. That would have actually been a really big opener, and they could have gone off a play instantly off the back of that if they wanted to. And this is, again, that instant transition of the what? change of speed coming out. Kenny, uh, do you give him a bit of a haircut there with that AWP? Yeah, I I don't even know how he missed that. I really looked like it was on his head, but yeah, probably a fresh haircut for I do believe it is uh, it's Aircast. Bear in mind, Jackie, they don't have a single kit, mm. and especially if they let go of the lower bomb side and they have to go for the retake, they're gonna have to push in fast. Even the utility, just a nade and two smokes. Shoxy though, Dick Stacy not checking the angle, and Shoxy will strike Ooh. finds oh finds two i don't know if we've got a second one looking for more dexter will finally drop him but he's done his job it's dexter however replies back and makes it a 3v2 a big shocksy round once again being such a pinnacle player towards outside amanek just waiting in the rafters to try and slam down from the top rope gets that kill on towards malta and dexter will be taken down and there you have it g2 finally starting to come back into the fold as they get themselves that third round Holding it down, and really that just came down to the fact that Stacy didn't clear his angle. If he would have checked that, it could have gone completely different. That was two players just off the back of a one and done position, really, from Shocks. Absolutely. Uh, that These are the small little mistakes that Greyhound really can't afford to make. Bear in mind, even though you have a 4 3 lead right now, you should not be feeling too comfortable. You still have a long, long way to go. And like we said earlier, Jackie, money wasn't great, and that means we will be seeing a mixed, kind of a mixed buy. A couple of AKs, the UMP, a Tech 9, and the Nade doing a ton of damage to Shocks. Ooh. lines them up but doesn't find a single kill but does so much of damage that nade 
I, I don't even know Malta's still alive. <laughs> How is he even alive? That is rough. A few seconds earlier on the nade, and it could have done so much more damage, blowing them all straight out of the server. Instead, Jax is going to have to do it manually. He wants to try his hand with a little bit of basketball, though. Slams the nade straight into him. Him and Amanek working well as a duo until Sicko has other ideas in mind. Trades it back with a headshot, but wasn't ready for the strike of Amanek. A good defense towards the B side. It looked like it was a little bit shaky off the first contact, but they smooth it over and equalize the scoreline. I liked what Greyhound did there. They didn't have enough utility. Their weaponry wasn't the best. A couple of AKs and pistols around, so they went for the fast play towards Secret. A little surprised Shox didn't get a single kill there, but Amanek, again, yeah. 3K. If he hadn't helped his teammate out there, that round could have could have gone the way of ground, we don't know, right? But hero, a hero play coming from Amanek, ensuring the G2 don't get, I would say eco, but lose the round that they should have won. As Greyhound now, finally on a full eco. Glocks all around, pretty much a free round for G2. Yeah, let's see if they are just gonna go for that shock and all star play, the straight burst towards A being one of the more common attempts. Again, with a HE rolling through. Look, like actually was gonna bounce in there, but doesn't do that much damage whatsoever. Greyhound, all they really need to do on this one is go for a confidence push. Play with all five. Unfortunately, they're walking straight into the meat grinder. Shoxy awaiting with his open arms to just greet them all shortly, <laughs> not Shox. Smashes his way through the lot of them, the MP9 Smackdown. I call that daddy's little trust fund. That's money for <laughs> days, money for days for Shoxy. And, uh, well, I mean, Greyhound not going to be too worried about that. I did do a call for a tactical time, and that's a cool, good time to call it out. Many a times you see some of the more underdog teams and newer teams uh, wait too long to call for a tactical time when things really aren't clicking here. But dangerous thing is G2, you know, if they start getting fired up, if players like Shoxi, like Hammond, if start, you know, rolling and start hitting those shots, it could get a little rough for a G2. So it's a good tactical timer. Let's see what they do with it, however. The buy is going to be coming in. I don't believe we'll see an AWP being bought out by or for Sicko. It's going to be AKs all around. The good thing is, though, they have a lot of utility. And so far, I haven't really seen that crazy any you know utility usage coming out from Greyhound. It's been a few smokes here and there towards outer yard, uh, but nothing to execute heavy so to speak. And let's see if they have that, because they did allow Nuke through, so I'm expecting at least a couple of you know, cheeky executes coming out from the Aussies. Yeah, and if there's going to be a round to utilize it as well, this would be the sort of play, right? You've had a lot of heavy outside control, very basic smokes that just block off the angles and work as a squad. If you're going to throw something into the mix, do so now when you've got the five rifles in play rather than the AWP on Sicko. We saw that one aggressive peek from him, but talking of what aggression, the? it's just a lobby crunch. They're just going for it. G2 are fueled by confidence off the back of that previous round, and that is a huge way to play it. Oh, you love it. They'd love to see it, don't you? Like, they've been playing a little bit too reactive, and all of a sudden they're like, all right, they went for the attack timeout, they have a buy, they're probably setting up something. Let's make things a little rough for them. And they push in, they get the kill as well, and they establish the man advantage so very early on. And the fact they didn't see anyone in lobby means Greyhound now have to take time getting back lobby control. Yeah. And yeah, I love this. I love this from G2. And look at Shocks now. Again, now I think I do believe he's making his way towards Secret, where he's going to try and find another free frag here. This is beautifully played. An awful lot of de uh, delay tactics as well from G2 to actually slow this round even further. And they have a ton of utility left. You've still got two smokes there, one flashbang for Lucky. You've got a little bit of offensive utility on Kenny and Lucky. It just depends on the timing now. About 45 seconds left on the clock as we get down to crunch time. G2 needs to do something soon. And Shox is everywhere, isn't he? <laughs> Pushes to his lobby, map. goes to a secret, now he's in vents. And Jax towards, uh, and I like what Jax is doing. He doesn't need to really make any contact or go for any contact. Play spots out of player, Ooh. goes for the spray, does so much damage. That's a smart thing. There's no need to fight. They can just keep delaying them. Can he? Yes. No need to aggress there so much. And Jax is holding the line. 23 seconds. Greyhound are going to get completely wiped out here. Yeah, Jax, literally all he had to do there was try and slow them down even further. He did a fantastic job of falling back towards ramp. Instead, though, gets traded out. And Shoxy, he's been roaming around the map. He's been waiting for some action. But the only thing that's going to come his way is a bullet straight to the cranium, delivered by Dexter, falling back into the three versus three now. This is going to be a rough retake. I completely jinxed it. It was a 5v3. I was like, Greyhound again to get completely destroyed. And somehow, Lucky's left alone in a 1v3. He makes it a 1v, 1v, sorry, a 1v4, and he makes it a 1v3. But he's going to get the hell out of there. I don't know how Greyhound won that. And this is the second time we've seen this happen. Yeah. Like, barely 20 seconds remaining. The previous time, they made the way from Secret. This time, it was from Ramp. And G2 didn't do anything wrong per se. Maybe Jax would have like stayed alive a little bit longer, stuck around towards uh, that cubby area towards the lower bomb site. You know, made sure Greyhound expended a little bit more time clearing out the angles. But Greyhound, when it comes down to crunch time, they just hit their shots and some very good entries coming out, especially from Dexter, the in-game leader.
Well, that's the rough part they fall into, right? Is because the tag we actually saw from Lucky onto Sicko knocks him down to two HP. As much as he was incredibly low, he still survived. Had the extra presence with a the manpower, they were able to overwhelm him on the site push purely because at that point, you're trying to prioritize one target. You had the one push from the left side of ramp, two pushing from the right. Kenny as well, missing that shot was critical. The difference of the round, if we actually saw Sicko fall, Kenny connect the shot, or even one of the two, they would have been in a much better position to actually close it out. G2, though, I like to see this. They're going instantly in for the tack pause. They are indeed. Uh, it's Right now, it's poised to be anyone's game, right? 5-5. Five, five. The scores are tied. However, G2 are not going to be too worried quite yet. They have oodles of money to work with. Uh, Kenny S with AWP once more. He hasn't been looking... Too very, it's still very early days, yeah. Jackie, but he hasn't been looking too sharp with the op yet. He really hasn't had a chance much to do it, but he was really instrumental in the initial few rounds. Shoxy's woken up, uh, Amanex looking solid as well, so they're not too worried about things yet. It's still early days. It's not exactly the you know the 12 3 half CD sites which, which we used to have a few years back. It's a much more different map here. And for Greyhound, though, winning one might say a miracle round. Let's see what they can do as Shoxy with the op. Dual op setup, in fact. See, this is a bit of a different play, right? You oh. give him that first, well, the second drill to actually play the angle, watch towards Silo. Kenny S instead, waltzing his way over towards Secret to try and back them up. Urkash should peek into this if he goes for the clear towards outside to support his team. It just depends on Shox's positioning and how long he holds for this. Instead, falling back and a play towards the CT box so he can actually clear the cross, set up to try and actually hold things here for Kenny. But he doesn't fancy the face, Blur. He doesn't indeed. And uh, can't really blame him. And for Greyhound, again, they take so much time clearing out these angles and getting map control. But that being said, a little bit more faster this time. And I like how they're using utility. They're not really going for the dry peaks here. They're using some of those flashbangs to move the CTs out of position. See, another flashbang forcing. Bear in mind, Shox is all the way to his garage. And now he's made his way towards hell. But that being said, Kenny has been a re-aggression. Can he catch someone off guard here? Depends if they understand as well that potentially we do have that double up set up in play. If they focus so heavily on Shox, believing of his position, they might not expect the risky peek from Kenny S. Coming out behind, skulking in the rear, a rapid shot onto Sicko. That's him done for. Shocks now kicks it up a notch as well as he wants to come into the fray. Dick Stacy with a trade back onto Jax at least. Makes some kind of an impact into the round, but there's not much time and there is no manpower whatsoever. It really comes down to if they can hit their shots from this point forward. Indeed, 15 seconds to Dick Stacy floating around as Aerocast will fall to Shoxy and Dick can get the bomb down, but his 1v3 might be a little bit too much. Kenny is just going to push oh. in while well, he's going to be going in alone. There was really no need for that, and that makes things a little bit more possible for Dick Stacy. He's got two already, needs to find two more. Amanek um, and Shoxy, they don't have a kit. I do believe there's a kit, kit drop somewhere, though. They should be able to pick, pick this one up, but Dick Stacy, I'm not sure Shoxy spotted him out. He's gonna peek on wide, finds Amanek, but Shoxy with the trade with the op, and that too was semi-blinded. That came a little too close for G2. I'm not sure why Kenny had really had to go for that. That's ridiculous. I mean, the position that they've been left in at the end there, uh, the fact he was allowed to get so far out, literally have that 1v1, potentially could have got the flick off towards Shox, is, is just outrageous. As you said, Kenny walks in, he expected the plant to be over towards Decon, obviously clears that angle, just wasn't ready for it at all, but it, it wasn't necessary. You had the manpower advantage, you're not going to lose that round. Absolutely, and the only only escape route that Dick Stacy had was the door where Kenny has came in yeah. through. All he had to do was hold that angle, ensure his trap there, wait for his teammates to come in, Amanek and Shoxy. And bear in mind, you have two ops. You got to bear that in mind. The retake against AK-47 would have two ops. It's never going to be that easy. So that got a little too hairy for G2. Um, and that means that their money has been whittled down, at least for the majority of his players. Kenny has still has 2,200, but the rest of them are pretty low on cash. And Greyhound giving a much faster approach. But it's just going to be two players being sent in towards Secret, while three players are again waiting towards Lobby, and Kenny, yes, oh. spots the feet out, but doesn't quite land a shot. Two shots from Kenny this game feel like they should have hit as well. That's, that's another one that it seemed like it should have been set up for success. The vent burst coming through from Amanek, as he's a man that just loves to cause chaos. We'll get the tag off onto Dexter, but he isn't going to die from it. He will stay alive, ready to rumble once more. Caught between two men, though. Not quite sure which angle he wants to peek into first. Utilizes Dick Stacy to get the trade back onto Jax at this point. It's a 2v2 with tons of time on the clock. Kenny and Shox are pretty much trapped outside the site. It just depends off the back of this plant. If Shox actually goes in for this on a contact face, you can kill Dick and there's so much more you can do. 
And Urkas makes it a 1v1, finding Kenny as he knows exactly where Sharks is. But Ooh. what a flick from Sharks! Decapitates the man. And it's going to be G2 getting to round number seven. But again, coming down to 1v1. These, these rounds are pretty damn close, Jackie. Yeah, it is wild actually how back and forth a lot of these have been, right? Some of the rounds that G2 have picked up very easily could have gone the way of Greyhound, and the same can be said, vice versa. It's it's wild the fact it's literally just coming down to pure individual plays at this point. One thing I gotta point out though, Sharks playing like this in the first game oh, of the yeah. tournament, that is a great sign indeed. You can see 138 ADR. The closest is Dexter on 109 for Greyhound. And yeah, Sharks has just been Incredible so far, right? Even Ammonek as well, even though like if you look at the ADR, it's not as good as Jax. But if you look at the impact some of those kills have been, he's been it's been great. Yeah, well, that's the fact, obviously, we had the complete slaughter with the MP9 to build up his economy, but those other 10 frags were big impact kills. Like, Absolutely. The amount of damage he's done to actually save them rounds is, is critical to the success. Oh, I like to see this, Blur. Lucky with the blue <laughs> spruce, the XM10 coming out. I like a little bit of this. Love to see it. And Obviously, because the money's still not that great for G2. They won that round, but they did have just that one player survive. And for Greyhound Gaming, it's a it's a better eco than just going for all clocks all around. We have a couple of Tech Knights, a couple of Peter Fitties, and a Desert Eagle in the hands of Dexter. They have a lot of utility as well. And again, you're going to go for the fast play. Oh, that nade, the right in the face. And there's a huge gap there. It, okay, Shox is there oh, to get the same. kill. I, I was wondering why Kenny has to fall on back. I know, I was scared at that point. The ramp rush coming through though, flashbang in, tons of tags though at least from Amanek. It's a smart play as well from Jax, just back off, play for the actual initial aggression. Dexter with the deagle, gets the headshot. Okay. Sicko as well coming through with the P250 punish, surely not the long range. <laughs> the XM10 coming through as he wants to bite down upon them, instead switches to the sidearm, a couple of tags here and there, and we're left in the 2v2. How is this even, how is this going wrong with G2? Urkast, bear in mind, because they went for the uh, they went for the mixed buy, that means they have Kevlar. They don't have any head armor, but that's okay. Because Jax is on 12 HP, Jackie. He's internally bleeding. But then again, Shocks is still very much alive, and he's got 100 HP to work with here. You've given Dexter an orc. He's gonna go for that face down. He literally needs to connect one shot off here. The same can be said for Jax, though. It's a headshot angle if he plays it smart. But they don't fancy it. They're not making their play over towards B. They're instead going to back off. It looks like they're setting up to try and take the A Annihilation, walk their way in and stake the claim as their territory. But they instant go for the plant. They don't clear it. Shocks. All he had to do was sit towards Hut. He peeks out. It's an easy one, two, left, right, good night. And G2 get another round. I guess once the toss in the smoke there, they went in really fast towards heaven. They weren't expecting both the players there, but yeah, a little bit of a misplay I felt like from uh, Greyhound, because they had no control of the lobby. Yeah. They had no idea who was there inside of Hut, and it was Shoxy waiting there, and there was no one really holding that angle either. I, I don't I don't know who it was playing towards heaven, but I would have liked you to push out further to make sure that no one pushed in from Hut and got that kill onto the bomb planter. So that's the thing again, right, Jackie? It's like the small little mistakes being made and G2 capitalizing on it. It's really all it's been coming down to. And G2 again, with a nice early Molotov to try and delay the initial aggression coming through. We're seeing Amanek actually clutching onto the auto shotgun as well. So still some potential for some close range critical kills coming through. They're trading quite effectively at this point though. Tons of damage coming out. The firefights are all going in favor of Greyhound. And look how low everyone is. This is not a good round for G2, Black. Oh no, Amanek at lucky so very low. Amanek <laughs> just <laughs> rattling of shot, trying to hide the sound of his dropping down. And Urkast, by the way, is, all, is a man of the mission. Three kills for him already. He's all the way towards heaven. This bomb side is there, so they're taking. The only problem here is Lucky on 14 HP who has pushed him towards lobby. So he has some information gleaned. What can he do with this? Because he's not going to be expecting Urkas to be waiting here. And this could be a free kill. This could be kill number four for Urkas, who's now on an ace. But Amanek, with the auto shotty, Jackie, what can he do? Is there any chance for some spice? A little bit of life left in this round. Urkas, he wants the ace, but Amanek just wanted something. Instead, he's going to be greeted by Sicko and put down into an early grave. Eight to six now. As things are actually getting pretty close here. It, it, you know, it's, it's either going to be a 9-6 half or an 8-7, and I wouldn't be surprised if we actually did see it go 8-7. It, it's, it's been so back and forth the whole game. And with what they're left to work with on G2, 
they need a loan at this point to be able to invest into anything tasty. They're stuck with the pistols. Yeah, it's just unfortunate, right? So many rounds where it was uh, just a 1v1s or 1v2s, and because of that, and right now, they are broke for money. I love what Greyhound did the previous round. Though. Aggression coming out from them, but this time, instead of going towards secret or ramp, they went in aggress aggressive towards the CT side, where G2 just lost his deals to Urkas, a man who I, apart from any of the Renegades players, I do believe he's probably the best Australian player right now. It's Shoxy with the Deagle. Oh, it was set up for him as well. You could see him getting ready. The itchy trigger finger, but he's not going to be able to kill him. Goes down to Urkast to kick this one off. It was that one bit of potential with a close proximity. But we fall back into an advantage for Greyhound now of a minute and 10 seconds. Well, I'll keep playing towards hard with it, CZ, but... Uh... They need to go a little bit more aggressive somewhere here. Dexter already just on a fact-finding mission towards defense. The Molotov is going to push on out the two players towards hut. But it looks like by the, by the way... Okay, Ooh. never mind. Kenny S yes, catches someone by surprise. Ooh. Jax finds Dexter as well. And the CZ's doing a lot of damage. It's going to be a 2v3 for Greyhound. Oh, no. Lucky! <laughs> My goodness, with the double tap coming through with the CZ, the easy one-two hit, he shuts it down, and that is going to be a 9-6 half. There is more to come as we carry this one on after the break. are back with Greyhound Gaming facing off versus G2 Esports here on Nuke. It's been a bit of a naughty one to kick us off. <laughs> I still am um, trying to digest how G2 won that final round of seasons. <laughs> Hitting all the shots and uh, you love to see it as now Greyhound. Six shots on the T side, not a shabby at all. The problem is G2 have so many tricks up their sleeve on their T side that Greyhound, they're going to get pressured here as Dexter. He's taken one for the team, the in-game leader, Nade and a kit and USPs all around. This pistol round really does boast a lot of how this game is going to go. The early smoke out towards main coming through from G2 as they get ready to try and go for a bit of a burst straight through Squeaky. But the only thing Squeaky clean is the shots from Urkas. Connects an instant one straight between the eyes of Amanek and looks to do more. He doesn't find more, but Sicko is there to reply back. And Jax with a trade as well. Shoxy finding one more, but the trades are thick and fast. And Dick Stacy already from behind. 
They know where he is. They close the door in his face when Malta finds one. There's no need for him to go for the spider, but he might need to, and he will win it out. And that is going to be the pistol round going the way of Greyhound. If Malta hadn't won that fight, that was would be that would have been a one v one, and that could have been anyone's round. But Greyhound winning a crucial, crucial round indeed. And Jackie got to point out, you saw G two had three players with utility. Yeah, they had a plan in mind. That's the thing. They are going to have way more tricks up their sleeve compared to how Greyhound were playing more contact based on their T side. So it's going to be two different play styles here on the T side of Nuke. Oh, that's very true. We, I expect at this point we're going to see execute heavy plays coming through from G2. The strat that they boast should have an awful lot in it on this map. Whereas, as you said, the entire time with Greyhound, it was mostly outside control. We didn't really see a single take towards the A site for the most part. It was just late round contact that came back towards it. And G2, it seems like they're going to try it again. They do have that one smoke and a flash. It's smoke already being expended, and I like that re-smoke coming in from uh, Greyhound. Tossing it in, making things a little rough here. The flashman to pop it out, and it is a slaughter. Dexter finds two. Oh, oh, no! <laughs> <laughs> is he going to go for the hunt? Yes, he is. Chasing Kenny S, running for his life, <laughs> but he will be found out. As Jax does get a kill out of Sicko, who had the scout, and that should be it. Shocks with a knife in the smoke, trying to be cheeky here, but yeah, this should be Greyhound all the way. He's like a lost child in Asda, just waiting for his mum to find him at this point. Switches back to the Glock. Can he really kick up any more of a fuss into the round? No, not at all. Left lifeless at that point as he is taken down by Urkast. It was <laughs> the one he just got to the left side of Vent and just got stuck. Just at the timing, it was beautiful. <laughs> much bueno. It was uh, much bueno indeed. That was one of those one of the joys of watching Counter Strike moments like that. <laughs> As Greyhound though, just one casualty. Sicko will be dropped the scout from. I think I do believe it was picked up by Urcast, who was upgraded to an AUG. Two Augs, the Famas, uh, the MP9 and Dexter. Like we said, Nuke City side, those SMGs do have a place. And for G2 though, it is going to be the buy. Not the best of buys because they didn't get the bomb down, but. Uh, Five AKs, a pretty decent sum of utility, and a very fast take towards outer. However, Sicko with the scout, he could still deal some damage. Oh, he's got to get those chest shots off, though, and actually connect these wounding hits with the scout. At this point, they tried to slow it down a little bit. They've still got the smokes. They can do the double smoke for the cross. Jax getting peppered by the Famous. Sicko spots it just on the near gap of the smoke there as they get down towards Secret. So at least they have a read of what's going on here. But it depends on the defense over at B. Can Dexter actually hold this one down as he waits in the rafters? He does have Dick Stacy to drop on down. He's still holding the line, Dick Stacy, just wary of the fact that someone could come pushing in from the trophy or radio room, depending on which uh, era of Counter-Strike you come from. And that's true. Let's Lucky is just waiting around towards the trophy area. The bomb still dropped, mind you, so he still has to pick it up. But right now, with G2 having control of Secret, they do have a lot of options here. That's actually very true. If we have a look at this for the minute, obviously you can see they're still set up one player towards outside. You've got another man sitting over by radio, going to be backing off to try and grab that bomb. They're putting pressure towards the B site, potentially to try and cause that over rotation, but they're backing off. They're not fully committing to it just yet. There's still potential for this to actually develop into a different play if they want to. They use the smoke towards outside, though, and it does seem like it is going to be that late round B play. Yeah, with that smoke, it's a tell. Dick Stacy, rattling off a few bullets through the smoke, hoping to get lucky, but that's going to announce his presence. And they're going to come charging up, but the crossfire is ready and ra waiting, but there is a player towards Decon as well. Dexter, that range is not the Ooh. best, but he will still find one that's a bit more damage before finally getting taken down by Am. And Kenny has finds Dick Stacy as well. And now it's a 4v3, bomb getting planted, retake is on. It looks like they might have actually been able to put enough fear in them to cause them to back off already, though. That nade hitting the toes of Sicko. At least his shoes will be a bit cheaper now, but he backs off and holds towards the ramp. This is probably just going to be the save play from them, and it seems that G2 actually will get their 10th round here. The slow work in worked out very nicely for them. Indeed. Uh, and, well, for Greyhound, though, they lost the MP9 and they lost the, the Scout. Mm. So it kind of makes sense for them to save these three rifles, right? They can still buy into the next round pretty comfortably, I do believe. Dexter can. Uh, with, the, with the bonus money he's going to get from this, he's going to be able to buy up something. Walter could do a bit of damage. Finds Jax. And it's a smart thing. Hold on to the rifle, because that's going to allow his team to go for a pretty solid buy. Uh, Dick Stacy is going to get dropped a gun by Malta, I believe. Uh, and Dexter should be able to buy for himself. The question is, is he going to buy an opera Sicko? Is the question. Indeed, he will. Sicko will be dropped the AWP. Dexter will pick up the gun from him. And Dick Stacy will be dropped a gun by Malta. How does the opt to actually play with this, though, is going to be the key. Are we going to see anything a little bit cheeky coming out? Some spice from Sicko as he heads his way over towards outside. Obviously, G2, last time around, it's a very commanding take. They weren't really dilly-dallying at all. They just pushed straight in, went headstrong. 
and they took them on, it worked out nicely for them. It did, and bear in mind, he was winning a couple of uh, early duels, especially against Kenny S with that off on the T side. So CD side, something that's definitely going to favor them. Or cast Ooh. finds two in the smoke. Kenny S and Lucky are down for the count, and G2 just have three surviving. Yeah, that was very nice. Just playing on top of the box, obviously, using the smoke gives himself a bit of a one-way angle. Just able to spray his way into him, did so much damage. Sets it up for his teammate Dexter to dissect them as well. And at this point, you're already massively outnumbered going into this round. Not only that, Amanek is looking a little bit green around the gills. He's on 50 HP as he pushes to try and gain that control towards outside. And they might not actually realize as well, if he goes for this drop down, that Dexter's in a position to not only get this info, but potentially deny the play as Shox is waltzing over. I, oh, I love that. I love that by Dexter. Just pushes out behind the smoke because he knows Shocks can't spot him out and make sure he catches the player. I do believe that was Amanek trying to climb on up. Urkast continues his reign of terror. That's a bomb drop. And Shocks is alone towards outer. He could potentially get a kill if he wins his duel against Dexter, but he's been spotted out. Ooh. He finds one. Finds another. Okay, Shoxy. 1v3 now, Jackie. Surely this doesn't carry on, right? Oh, he was set up for it as well. You could see him actually priming on the ankle, gets the tag off towards Sicko. It was the fact it was just the two crisp headshots back to back. It was like, all right, that's sick. We're getting into it. It's one of those rounds. We've, I mean, we've how many times have we seen that happen? Yeah. Right? It's like a 1v4, 1v3, 1v5. It shocks you. You're like, yeah, he's not going to win this. Boom, 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 boom. Round's done. And he's clutched it out. Unfortunately it for him. Happens. Yeah, it just happened. It's, it's Shoxy after all. But Sicko will ensure that he doesn't miss his shots. Shoxy on 21 frags and Dexter on the other hand for his team. Both the in-game leaders, I do believe, top fragging for the team. Yeah, setting themselves up potentially at this point to actually build himself into a 30 if this one carries on as it's proven to be a very close affair. Honestly, the way this game has been going, I wouldn't actually be that surprised if we saw this getting very close towards the full 30, as it's so back and forth. You know, that first T side was such a tell from Greyhound that it's going to be a close game, as long as they can maintain that level of play on their CT side, especially when they're set up to just slaughter everyone over by the vents. The bomb did drop down, at least. Yep, and uh, that one buy from Amanek at AK, able to find one, but lucky <laughs> with the... With the uh, Glock, not able to get anything done. Uh, a little surprised to see Amanek go for that buy because the rest of his team were in an eco. And yes, he can still afford an AK and Kevlar and helmet, but he just has 3,700. That means no utility. Or he goes for a Galil or maybe a UMP and has a little bit of extra utility to work with. But I'm a little surprised at that buy. I know they were going for the AK hero yeah. uh, play there, but was it really worth it though? Because you can take a look here. No utility. But then again, he can probably play the entry role, probably try and find something you know, towards ramp or maybe towards hut. But yeah, a little surprising, a uh, little surprised that they went for that buy. Well, it's also one of those rounds that it feels like doesn't really play into the necessity of having the single AK buy, right? Because yeah. you're basically going for a throwaway, let's try and get the bomb plant down, see if we can make something out of it. It's, it's a weird one. Normally you want to try and go for like a slower outside play, because then if he dies, you can drop it back. Yeah, or, or, or maybe, you know, just go for a deagle, a couple of deagles perhaps. Uh, just maximize the chances of dealing a little bit of damage. So I'm not a big fan of that. But that being said, AK armor, it's fine. It's not, it's not too bad for him. What is interesting, though, is that it is all things tied up. Ten all, Jackie. And uh, if you look at the weaponry, Augs, the AWP in the hands of Sicko, and for G25 AK. So, yeah, it's going to be a proper like buy round here. And the winner of this round is probably going to... I wouldn't say it's going to determine how the next couple of rounds are going to play out, but Jita's money is pretty bad at the moment. And for Greyhound as well, it's not that solid. And bear in mind, CT side, you know, you need that extra money for all the utility, for the weaponry, which is usually more expensive. And mm. ouch! That's got to hurt. Yeah, that is a big nade. Straight on the forehead there. Shocks are going to be headering that one away as he takes 50 damage from it. And G2, it looked like they were basically set themselves up to go for the skylight flashes and smokes through and then go for this late round execute towards the A side, but they're already going to be limping in from the damage they've taken. Jax at least wins the initial opener as he gets that opening kill. As the trade back, Sicko leaps out through the vent, gets the capitalization back on Lucky. Shox walks in, but it's... Kind of like, you know, the John, the John Travolta meme where he walks in, he just sort of looks <laughs> around, he puts his hands up, right? Because everyone was already dead at that point. It's, 
it's just kind of not really worth. I really like the way Greyhound said that one up, especially Sika was waiting towards the fence, and especially when you have the opener in the vents, you don't want to show yourself, but the timing in the peaks coming in yeah. from each and every one of those players is perfect. The second the first player dropped down, uh, I think it was Malta playing towards that side, he got the kill. Then the second they were pushing him, there was a player pushing out from heaven who got the kill, and then Sika pops in from the vent. So very, very good timing on Greyhound, on the Greyhound players going in for the peaks, and with that, the money, like we mentioned earlier, not that great here. We do have the soul, the hero, AK-47. Of course, it should be in the hands of Shoxi. The rest of the team, a couple of deagles, a couple of CZs, but not much. One smoke for utility. Dick Stacey, potentially finding a position to really be tested as well if they do head their way over towards ramp later on into this one. You've got the two players set up towards Squeaky. Shoxi has that AK in hand but he really needs to kick up a fuss with it. They're gonna do something into this one. They're trying to make their presence known at the least. As Jax causes a bit of a hubbub, makes some noise, but here comes the play towards Dick. Throws out a nice hefty nade to do some damage, and Kenny takes the full front or assault from it, and Dick now hitting him with a rhino as he rips them both a new one. I love that from Dick. Like, he tossed in the nade, and he somehow found that little window of opportunity where he was able to sneak his way to the back of ramp. Yeah. They weren't expecting that, and he had Sicko peeking in from hell, getting that kill. They did not expect him to be there. Two free kills for him, making sure that uh, G2 really did not get up to any shenanigans. But that being said, Shox is still alive, but unfortunately, he will find nothing. Jack's left alone in a 1v5 with the bomb down. I also hate it when I get surprised by a hidden dick. At this point, though, Jack's left in a 1 versus 5. Nothing from Urkast, as he will slaughter him over towards Hunt. And Greyhound now picking themselves at 12 rounds. Another pause from G2 as well. This is a worrying sign, because this is where we get into a position where Greyhound, as we spoke about earlier, especially with Neil behind them, you imagine the amount of uproar that's probably starting to develop, right? How they're starting to get fired up into this. This is where they really do start to run away with things. Yeah, and, and their CD side is looking so very good. Their crossfires are on point. They're not really going for any aggressive plays. Like so far, you haven't seen them go for, go for a lobby push perhaps, or maybe just like a lobby uh, pincer movement coming in yeah. from ramp or whatnot. And we might actually see that coming out here because you'd have gone for the pause, you're going to be going for the buy. And now that they kind of have the slight little edge on top of G2, we might be seeing a little bit more aggressive plays. Neil might have potentially broken a headset already by now. <laughs> Not another one. Not another one, Neil. You know, there was a point at a UK event, he was so excited when, I think at the time it was infused, won a map, he, he literally started licking the wall. There's a picture of him near a wall, tongue out. It, madness, absolute wild scenes. I don't know how we let him on the BBC. Uh, licking the wall, okay. I have never seen anyone do that, but anyway. That's Neil M. That's Neil M right there. And you need a man like that behind you if you want to get these upset wins here as Greyhound on their way to potentially pull off an upset. But that being said, G2 behind the smoke, there is a dick waiting for them. And he's got that AUG down. Flashbang is good, and that's interesting. Oh, the Molotovs are Telda. Now he knows. Ram control has been relinquished. And for Greyhound, now if G2 makes Ooh. pace here, they could potentially get control. But Sicko with the AWP finds Lucky, looking for more with a wild... Flick shot doesn't find anything as Dick Stacey will be taken down. Amanek finding both Dexter a little too late to the party as Malta with a spray. And that's going to prevent Jax from getting the bomb down, but still, it's man advantage for G2 as the bomb is going to get planted. And this goes to show as well what G2 need if they're going to be able to actually start smashing their way back into this. That man himself, Amanek, someone that could be such a lethal warrior when it comes down to it, unfortunately, is going to crumble under the pressure, broken through. Their defense is now more open as all the CTs are converging making their play back over towards this site. It's a good double setup though. Kenny S and Jax working nicely as a well-oiled machine. Technically, they could head back up towards that A side if they want to. Jax does have the bomb. Kenny down to two HP, but they get the trade across. They bait for each other. Urkas is trapped over on A. They have time to plant it, Blair. It's technically a 2v1. Anything could happen. Anything could happen. Kenny S. Two points of health, but oh. then off in his hands. He's not gonna miss those, and that was so back and forth, right? G2, they had lower bombs. That was a 4v3, but they're not able to get the bomb done. And for a moment there, Grayon had the man advantage as well, but great pair work coming out from G2 there. I think, I, I do believe it was Kenius and, uh, was it Lucky? Who were playing the final, uh, the 2v2, and they played it to perfection, right? The second a player gets spotted out, they double peaked that final player who was playing towards Decon. Very well played from them, and that's gonna ensure that G Greyhound don't quite run away with it yet. But that being said, Greyhound, they've been on such a streak, the money is so very solid, they're gonna have no problem with the buy. No, this has actually been going very well for them, obviously, in terms of cash. They can buy straight back into it. Healthy amount of utility, kits all across the board. Are they trying to open it up? 
Those nades getting thrown across, those hefty forearms of the Greyhound boys, but unfortunately they're not going to be able to hit anyone on the side of G2 just yet to make their initial mark on the scene. Kenny S trying to smart something out. A little reminiscent of how uh, Greyhound Rippling, the T-side here, a little bit more contact-ish plays than I'm used to seeing on Nuke. But a look at this Shoxy pushing in aggressively, taking advantage of the smoke and the Molotov to get control of the entrance to a secret. But guess who's waiting for them? It's Sicko with the AWP. He's all by his lonesome. But it's a good position. You know, get the pick, hit or miss, just fall on back, play the angles. As you can see, the aggression from G2 towards outer. He's waiting for that push, but it's not going to be coming towards him. Instead, they decided to opt to go for the garage control. They clear out Dexter. They've been able to find him and eradicate him. They've now got a big opening into this one. It could do so much more. The smoke goes in. The shocks, he's suspect of this. He realizes that he could still be playing close in it and waits for the push. However, another bit of contact comes through. Talking of the face, it is going to be Molta that finds Lucky. Kenny with a trade back onto her. Cast at this point, you left into a free versus free. But this is an awkward one. Just when Shoxy bobs his heads up, he gets trapped between two men. This guy right behind them, that is Malta. Per perfect timing. He finds three in total, and Amanek's going to be left alone with 10 seconds on the clock. There's no time for him. He's just got to go for the save here. I'm surprised he's still floating around, trying to find something, I guess, trying to inflict a little bit more damage. But there is no time remaining, and he will swap out the AK for the AUG, and he will hold on to this gun. Can I just point out Greyhound, the second they lost out of control, the second they lost Dexter towards the garage, the way they just aggressed towards lobby, they had a player pushing up ramp, and uh, Malta won the duel uh, towards hut as well. I loved what they did there. Yeah. Aggression. You lose, you lose a part of the map, go for more map control. They got the lobby control, Malta from behind. Quickly finding those two kills back to back. Greatly played, great reactive play from Greyhound. That's that's really the, the major sort of key to it, right? Because that's one of the things that we didn't really see that many times from G2. There was only the one sort of lobby crunch, which was a full front or assault, rather than, as you said, actually causing a bit of a tug of war between map control. Because of how many slow rounds we saw from Greyhound towards outside and their T side, in reality, G2 should have been completely swarming the rest of the map to try and make up for it. And that's what we're seeing now from Greyhound. They have a good understanding of how to actually play this here. Somehow they get this opening pick as well. Kenny S has gone down. Ooh. Jax is trading it, but Jax, double or nothing, and he wants another bit as well. Through the smoke, tags Dexter down to 59. This hasn't gone too well for the Greyhound boys. Yeah, they got the first opening pick. Dick Stacy, he's been spotted out. It's going to be a double peak coming. Amanek and Lucky are going to be peeking together. And there we go. He gets taken up at Urkas. It's very much alive here. And he's going to catch one player off guard. He knows there's another one there. Bomb spotted out. He's going to go for the duel. Doesn't quite land the shot, but Lucky is so lucky to be alive in two points of health. And look at Dexter. He's pushing towards Squeaky as well. Nate is going to be sailing a little too late. And Lucky's still very much alive for Dexter. What can he possibly do? He has no idea where Jax is at the moment. But the good thing for G2 is they have a lot of time. Did Jax spot him dropped onto its vent is the question. And I think he has. Lucky and Jax, they've got full control of the A site. Lucky can go for a complete safe plant. He doesn't have to worry about this one. Dexter, is he going to actually opt to try and work his way back into this round? They do have money to play with, so it's not the worst affair if he loses it. Bob's his head up, but it depends on the timing. He might have actually sold himself to Sauron there just as he gets towards the top of the ladder. The repeat comes in from Jax. It's an easy connection with the AK. And it's now 13 to 12. It really does look like this one could be going the full 30. I'm just, I'm just waiting for the uh, for the graphics to show up later on as to how the rounds have been going. It, yeah. I think there was only the the initial, the beginning of the second half. There we go. Right on time, right there. We do have, you can see the streak they had where they almost won six in a row, apart from round number three with G2 won. But apart from this, it's just been so back and forth this entire game. And I, and I agree with you, Jackie. I think this could very well be... I smell the beginning of, uh, of an overtime. It's there. It's you know, it's just on the back burner right now. The spices are starting to bubble up. You know, there's still a little bit more of a, a cooking to go. We'll have to wait and see. The early smoke's coming through towards that side. This is tasty. Mauta going for a big play here. If he finds Jax and the bomb potentially, this could be pretty world stopping. As the Greyhound killer bees are on the swarm, they do get the first, but the trades are thick and fast. Kenny S Ooh. having some fun there, all right. There, eco frags, but still very sharp kills indeed. The 4K for him. Well, if he hadn't done his aimbots practice early on, that would have definitely warmed his hand up. Yeah, that was naughty. Those flicks were, were very, very lovely. Some tasty little taps there from Kenny S. And finally, another pause coming through as well from Greyhound. We've pretty much seen all of the pauses used at this point mirrored with one apiece left for either of these two teams as they've needed this time to actually talk about things and adjust. 
So Greyhound, slowing down the pace a little bit now. Going to reassess the situation, work out the buy, and then get straight back into the action. We do have the orb buy coming through from Sicko, but I'm curious to see what he does with it again, if he's actually going to switch up that pace. Yeah, he, he has been a little tame, one might say, uh, with the orb. He's seen playing towards outer, but the second the flash has come out, you know, he's been playing a little bit more passively. Yeah, he had a couple of very nice shots. So that's it. Apart from the aggression I've seen come from him towards outer or maybe towards secret, yeah. uh, he hasn't been very impactful with that op on the on the CT side especially. I think it was way more impactful on the T side, oh, yeah. despite having less of frag. So I'm curious to see what uh, Dexter is going to tell him to do. In the meantime, G2 once again flashes, smokes towards outer. Shocks is going to be leading the charge. And they have Amanek with a MAC-10. What's he going to do with that? Well, he's a bit of an entry machine at times. If you throw him in a general direction of some CTs with a MAC-10, he'll probably massacre his way through them. But let's see if the Biggie Smalls play is going to work out well. So he tiptoes his way down through secret. The backstab potential of this man could actually be incredibly high. And uh, you do see Amanek with Shoxy. And there were uh, two man uh, expedition crew. Just clearing out secret, getting control of the entrance, the stairs, while the rest of the team are going back towards the lobby, where Kenny S with the op leading the charge. If they go towards upper, Shoxi and Amina can slowly, or rather, time their flank towards mini. Molotov being tossed in as well. Molotov, he's, he's aware something's happening here. Two Molotovs expended already towards the upper bomb side, but then they're going to be making it way towards ramp, or are they? They've been spotted up by Dick Stacy. He spots one more out, and there's no need for him to stick around, around and go for this fight. He will fall all the way back to safety towards the lower bombs. And bear in mind, they have no more utility apart from flashbangs remaining for Greyhound and that one solitary nade. Ooh, they're trying to get that control towards Ness, though, as they fight through. They actually do spook off and call Sicko to fall back as he misses the opening shot. There's that MAC-10 coming through as Amonix starts to bring the hype, sprints his way down. Dick Stacey, he needed to connect that shot. You're in a prime time angle there. It's the headshot position, but it's not coming out today. Instead, G2 are just slaughtering all three men that have a kill right now, have just ripped off the heads on their opening face. It's just Mortar and Sicko left. They did have an abundance of cash, but that well has gone dry. They don't have any money, and they need to save this one. They're dialing it back and falling the CT. Yeah, and with the fact, like you just touched upon, they have no money. So even though they have the AUG and the AWP in the hands of Mal Malta and Sicko, th the rest of the team, they're not going to have anything to work with here. Is it going to be a four spy? Is it going to be pistols? And hold on to that thought. G2 are on the hunt. Flashbang is good. Ooh. Sicko, that is such aware, such good awareness of Jax there. And Sicko, this is another one. Jax will find it. both the frags. No guns being saved by Greyhound Gaming. And that means G2 can very well get to 15 rounds. You hate to see it as well in that position. At least should have got the kick back on towards Jax, tried to keep himself alive. If they could have salvaged both of those guns, it would have been a bit better. They would have had the opportunity to potentially try and play a little bit of a hero round. Instead, at this point, they're basically just trying to play it out for the OT because they're going to have to go back in with the pistols. It's a 5.7, two P250s, a CZ. Dexter, the only one with armor. He has the smoke as well. In reality, we need a shock and awe play. And it seems like that is going to be over towards ramp as Dexter gets boosted up. Yeah, shock and awe would be the uh, what they need right now to the Aussies. The previous round, like they were losing duels from advantageous positions yeah. with augs. Duels you need to win, or at the very least, get one kill and then get traded, right? But the fact that the first three players drive, oh, he doesn't check. Dexter finds one. And they know where Dick Stacy is well, 5-7 in hand. Uh, haven't seen that one around in a while. Dexter repositions himself, picks up the AK-47. Oh, this, this is so cheeky from him. And Dick Stacy actually finds Amanek through the smoke. They won't be expecting this pace from Dexter, who's got the AK-47. Jax finds Orcas in the meantime. Kenny S caught out, but Dexter doesn't quite land a shot. They're going to be falling on back, because Jax has single-handedly opened up that upper bomb site. And now Dick Stacy with that AUG. And I love what Kenes has done. He's just given up the fight and he's going to be making his way all the way from Mini, but there's a guy waiting, but the off is there and he's going to get dropped on down. Bombs down and Dick Stacy doing even more damage finds a second kill as well. It's all on shocks. It's a 1v1. Blair, this is lunacy. The fact we've even been able to end up in this position is such an unreal scenario. Shocks. 35 seconds on the clock, grabs the bomb, pre-aims the angle, lines it up for the headshot, and it lands straight in the face of Dick. 15 rounds secured for G2. A ridiculous round even gets that position, right? Dexter, the elevated angle. Sure, at that point, it's a one and done position. You don't expect much more. Maybe salvage the AK, retreat, play it safe. No, keeps fighting, keeps fighting, keeps fighting. 
And I feel like you really have to give props to Jack into that round, really, as well, because without Jacks, that could have been a whole different story. Absolutely. And let's not count on Chalks here. How many clutches <laughs> has he won so far again? At least two. At the very least two. And, and looking at the scoreline, if those clutches hadn't gone his way, this could have been a very different story altogether. As Lucky finds your cast through the door, G2 just need one more round to close this one out. And for Greyhound, they need to win two back-to-back. -back. And already a man down, things are not looking pretty. No, oh, this is a rough spot to be in now for them. Sicko just left towards Ramp with the AWP in hand. Ramp has been a bit of a sour spot for Greyhound, really. They haven't been able to lock it down for the most part. G2 have had their number when they pushed towards it. That prior round was a little bit of a blip. Ooh, Shox has uh, broke his ankles. Yeah, okay. I think he's trying to imitate a Cesarado. Was it Cesarado who jumped on down in that uh, that clutch? I forget, but yeah. Oh, I, the one you, yeah, I think it was, right? I think it was Cesarado. Anyway, Shocks down to 55 HP for, uh, <clears throat> for no reason, but just as unfortunate. Things happen, it's Counter-Strike, but four players this time around. In fact, all five players snaking their way towards Secret. Slivering down. <laughs> Shocks is just hurrying up a little bit there because <laughs> he saw the smoke dissipating. Unfortunately for Greyhound, just one player there. And it's not in the side. He's playing towards ramp, and one smoke is just going to neutralize its position. And it is Dick Stacy, who has been struggling a little bit so far this game, at least when it comes to winning those deals. So at this point, they have the control towards the lower side. They've got down. They open the door to try and kick this one off. Dick Stacy peering from across the room. Going to be mollied off, but luckily he gets the response in. Takes a ton of damage, though, as he's trying to today for as long as possible. The nade also rolls in, and this... Oh, carpet bomb of nades, essentially. It's just ripping its way through that CT sustainability. The headshot back from Dexter trades it on towards Shocks. They're left in a bit of an unorthodox position as Kenny S is punishing them. when it's all down the Molter and Sicko. Kenny S hitting those shots. Lucky joins the party. It's all on Sicko and unfortunately he's got, he's not done anything here and he will do nothing. Lucky will find him. Triple kill for him. 16-13 will be the scoreline and that is going to be G2 winning after what? Seemed like a scare there. I, I really felt like Greyhound were going to run away with it, especially with that start they had on the CT side. Yeah, 